Hello and welcome to a short tutorial on the C Sharp wrapper for Better Terrain. I've set up a project here which has a tile map and a button and this is a C Sharp mono project. Uh, it's got a terrain set up, there's uh, water and ground. Um, I'll just demonstrate uh, what they're like. That's the water and the ground is like this uh, as you can see the ground tiles and uh, the water has this little lip on it next to the ground tiles to give a sort of 3d effect uh, so that's that's a sort of simple terrain this video is not going to cover how to set that up uh, look at the other videos i've made if you want information on how to set this sort of terrain up uh, you can see uh, the connections and the symmetries Okie dokie, so if I if I run this, it should build and the go button just prints out button pressed in the console. So very simple test project. Uh, I'm going to erase this stuff that I've made. There we go. So let's generate some tiles and trains through code with C sharp. Uh, here's the class it's very very simple right now first I'll go over how you would access better terrain uh, without using the wrapper so this is a sort of standard way of accessing a GD script class or auto load um, we'd call get node and we want to get root better terrain there we go uh, now if I go into project settings and auto loads you'll see there's an auto load called better terrain uh, that's put in by the plugin automatically and if we run this you can actually see it in the remote tree uh, so here's the scene but if we click on remote we can see what's running we've got the the root of the uh, scene tree and there's the auto load better terrain and here's the test scene I made so that accesses the auto load and then we can get our tile map get node and we can specialize that as a tile map and it's just called tile map then we could call into the GD script and we could call set cell and the parameters it takes is the tile map the layer which is going to be zero a coordinate which is going to be um, like three three let's say and the type of terrain so that's going to be another zero uh, so if we run that if i haven't made a mistake we should see yeah there we go there's our tile uh, then we could uh make another one next to it so at four three and we could even call update terrain cell on that second one and they're next to each other so they both should get updated there we go uh, so it's placing both cells and it's updating this one which updates the neighbors as well so that's the sort of standard way of accessing GD script scripts through C sharp and it's not very nice it works but it's got all these strings which you can easily you know make a mistake like that and it will build and run and you'll get an error that says push error string invalid call non-existent function okay well at least it tells you but worse than that you can um let's say we got the function name right but we forgot so we forgot to put the layer number in that again will still build and run and it will give a, an error at runtime oh there we go wow push error string invalid call expected expected flow arguments so it's not compile time checking what's going on and the syntax is a bit messy so let's delete this and I will 
use the wrapper that I've made. So we start off by getting our tile map node, and then we make a new better terrain. And we pass in the tile map, and that makes the wrapper. It uses this better terrain.cs file that comes with the plugin. If you're not using C sharp, this file is irrelevant, but if you are, it'll uh, load into your build and you can use the plugin like that. Now you probably don't want to make it a uh, local variable, but uh, a member variable instead, so you're not making one every time. If I build that, it seems happy. Um, let's use it to fill the screen. So the screen is um, 320 by 240. So it's uh, 20 by 15 in terms of tiles. Whoops, my typing is not very good today. So we can call set cell. Now we don't need to pass the tile map in every time uh, because it's part of the wrapper. So we just need to pass in the layer number, the coordinate, uh, which is just going to be a new vector two, X and Y, and the terrain, which is one. Uh, if you're unsure of your terrains, you can go check the tooltips here. I'll say zero and one. Then let's actually let's make that zero because the water is a bit vague looking. So we'll set that to zero for now. Update terrain area on layer zero. So once we've placed all the water tiles, we want to update them. Well, they're not water tiles. <laughs> once we've placed all the floor tiles, the ground tiles, we want to update them so that they all auto tile together. So let's run that and we should see the screen being auto tiled nice and easy. And of course this is all done to the wrapper so if you forget for example the layer number it's not going to build it's going to say um, well I missed off the area. Uh, I'm using Godot's internal editor here um, just because I don't usually use C Sharp. If you have Visual Studio Code or some other external editor, I'm sure it will um, link into the CS file and give you better uh, tool tips and uh, function completion. But it's just a very simple wrapper. It calls through to the set cell function, but it takes the, the right types of parameter. Uh, so that's very good. Let's set that to water and then go and look at our button pressed function. We don't need the printout. Let's make five random tiles into uh, ground when the whole screen is water. So uh, we're going to need a Godot collections array of vector to I. There we go. And I'm going to iterate five times. I'm going to pick a random X. Uh, I don't know my C sharp very well. I think it's rand range 0 to 19. I think it's inclusive, which is this is a bit spaghetti by now, but it's just an example, so don't worry. There we go. Chords add new vector 2i, x and y. Okay, so we have five random coordinates. Then we're going to call set cells on layer 0 at the coordinates to ground, which is also 0. I could make constants for the layer types and the terrain types, but I'm just. Uh, filling in literals for now because this is just an example. Uh, right, then we want to update terrain cells 
layer zero on our coordinates. There we go. Uh, so if I haven't made a mistake, that should build. Oh no, I forgot to put new in here. There we go. There is always something. Okay, that built, that has run, and there we go. Can make that full screen. As you can see, it's making some of the tiles into ground, like little islands popping out of the sea. Very good. So hopefully that makes using be better terrain from C Sharp a lot nicer. Um, it's just a simple wrapper. Uh, all it does is wrap the call functions in and make sure the types going into and out of them are correct. Uh, there's not much to it. It's not a C Sharp version of better terrain, so you don't get the speed up you would get uh, if it were that. I'm not good enough at C Sharp to attempt that. If you are, feel free. Um, and if you have any issues or problems, uh, report them on the GitHub or post in the comments here. I'll see if I can help. Uh, have fun and enjoy making some tiles.